Back here at home, a special surprise today for some high-achieving public high school STEM students that was in Prince George's County. Fox 5's Bob Barnard has their story. We are outside Eleanor Roosevelt High School in Greenbelt for a special ceremony honoring seven Prince George's County Public High School seniors, among the best and brightest being recognized for their excellence in computer science. And the best is yet to come. They are about to get a special delivery from Amazon. Yes, each of the students given their own box and inside a gift that will help make paying for college possible. Each of these students receiving a... Why do they have to pay for college? If you're a black kid and you got like a 3.5 and a, 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 a 1,100 or even a 1050 on your SAT, you can go to fucking Stanford for free, man. <laughs> the fuck are they talking about? You getting a fucking Yale. Each of these students receiving a $40,000 future engineer scholarship. Thankful, so thank you, Amazon, for giving me this opportunity. I worked really hard in high school to really get here, and I'm so excited to say that I'll be majoring in computer science at University of Maryland, and I'm just so excited that you gave me this opportunity to further my education. Amazon is recognizing top academic achieving students with a focus on STEM. Seven scholarships being awarded here in Prince George's County, 400 across the country. So computer science powers everything that Amazon does. And, and so we know firsthand the power of science and technology to change the world. And we know that passion. So Amazon giving $40,000 skips STEM scholarships to seven black kids. And that's just in this one fucking county. And potential is spread out throughout the community, but opportunity isn't. And so through the awards today, um, we hope to... Who thinks white kids are getting $40,000 scholarships from Amazon? Who these little white kids in fucking West Virginia or fucking Kentucky or some fucking Eastern Tennessee, those little white counties, who thinks... Amazon's going out there giving them fucking $40,000 scholarships. Increase access to computer science and engineering education for young people from underserved and historically underrepresented. Underserved and historically underrepresented. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> Those people in Appalachia aren't underserved or historically underrepresented. Oh, shit, we covered this, man. We covered this one right here. And off the top here at 6 o'clock, a Fairfax County grand jury has declined to indict a former Fairfax police officer following the shooting of an unarmed black man near Tyson's Corner. Tonight, we are... Damn, they, they, they threw the race in there early. They threw the race in there. 15 seconds in there, they threw the race in there. A Fairfax County grand jury has declined to indict a former Fairfax police officer following the shooting of an unarmed black man near Tyson's Corner. Tonight, we are getting reaction from the Fairfax County Commonwealth attorney. We want to get right over to Chief Legal Correspondent Katie Barlow with the very latest on this story. Katie, what happened today? <laughs> Well, early this morning, Fox 5 was alerted by the Commonwealth Attorney's Office to expect an update in the ongoing criminal investigation into the death of 37-year-old Timothy McCree Johnson. Johnson was shot and killed by police after fleeing Tyson's Corner in February after a suspected theft. Now, Caleb Kirshner, who's the lawyer for former Fairfax County Sergeant Wesley Shiflett, who's accused of pulling the trigger, says that a grand jury in Fairfax County returned a no-true bill, meaning there is no indictment. They declined to indict. Just a reminder, here's what it looked like happened that evening. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Let's go! Stop reaching! 
Shot reaching. Shots fired. Shots fired. He's chasing his son man through the fucking woods outside of the mall. Unfucking believable, man. Shiflet was fired after the shooting. Fairfax County Police Chief Kevin Davis said Shiflet's actions did not meet the expectation of the police department and did not comport with the department's use of force policies. In order to get an indictment, prosecutors in the Commonwealth Attorney's Office would need to convince at least four members of a grand jury made up of five to up to nine citizens that there's probable cause to believe that the officer committed a crime. Steve Descano's. Oh, he stole some sh He stole some shades. That man got killed over some shades. He stole some shades. He stole some sunglasses out of the store. The cop chased him. And then something happened out there in the woods where the cop felt like he had to shoot him. God damn, son, man, turning a fucking, stealing some shades into a fucking murder. In order to get an indictment, prosecutors in the Commonwealth Attorney's Office would need to convince at least four members of a grand jury made up of five to up to nine citizens that there's probable cause to believe that the officer committed a crime. Steve Descano's office now says, earlier this morning, I sat with Timothy Johnson's family and told them I expected an indictment to come today in the killing of their son. So I can only imagine their pain and shock when they received the news that the officer who shot and killed their unarmed son was not indicted. Since by law, no prosecutors were permitted to be present in the room when the investigating officers made their presentation to the grand jury. I can't say for certain what information they conveyed to the grand jurors. Descano says he is evaluating all options. Jesus Christ, man. That guy got killed over a fucking oh, a fucking pair of sunglasses, man. Jesus Christ. If, if the cop catches you stealing some sunglasses, you don't fight him. You don't reach for his gun. You just give up, man. You just give up, man. <laughs> like, all right, man. You got me, man. Here, take these fucking glasses, man. Fox 5 has told you That nigga was fighting like he robbed a fucking bank or something. Fox 5 has told you all about robberies across the city, including in the Adams Morgan neighborhood. And while the suspect in one of those cases is now under arrest, the people who've been dealing with the rise in crime think that person could be behind others. Is there, is there a connection here? Adrian Di Piazza is live in Adams Morgan to explain. Adrian? Well, good evening to you. You know, the people who live in that Adams Morgan neighborhood are tired of these break-ins yeah. and also of seeing strangers on surveillance cameras wandering the halls of their buildings. In the case tonight that... Seeing strangers on surveillance cameras wandering the halls of their buildings. And if one of those fucking gliders, because up here is gliders, if one of those gliders shoots a sun man that's wandering the halls of their building after he like tries to like break in their home, DC is going to go up in flames. I promise you. Salute the Orland P. Salute to you, man. He says, watching live, I appreciate you. Salute to Mark. I A man he says super chat number one on the board. Yeah, man. Salute to you for busting your cherry. Pause. Are tired of these break-ins and also of seeing strangers on surveillance cameras wandering the halls of their buildings. In the case tonight that we're reporting on, the dad who was the victim actually ended up spotting the suspect the very next day, calling police, and then he was arrested. 3.25 a.m. Tuesday, steps from a family of four's front door in Adams Morgan, a thief at work. He comes down our stairs, starts going through our closet, is picking through, you know, shoes. <laughs> I mean, yo, he making hella noise too, man. This ain't no cat burglar, man. These sub men don't even care enough to be cat burglars, man. He just in that motherfucker making all that damn noise. 
325 a.m. Tuesday, steps from a family of four's front door in Adams Morgan, a thief at work. He comes down our stairs, starts going through our closet, is picking through, you know, shoes and bags and jackets and clothes and baby items. The video has left Taylor Bush rattled. I don't mind about the items being taken, but I have two girls and a wife at my house, and they're my concern. I don't care about the items being taken. What? You fucking loud as a different man. This woke shit is a fucking mental disorder, man. So he can't care about the items being taken because the son man did it because that would be racist. But I have two girls and a wife at my house. clothes and baby items. The video has left Taylor Bush rattled. I don't mind about the items being taken, but I have two girls and a wife at my house and they're my concern. Not even 24 hours later, Bush spots the suspect on the sidewalk, a block from his home. I saw the same. That son man, that son man was still hanging in the neighborhood, man. Guy that was in my video pulled over followed him for a couple blocks. I would called the police. They arrived and made an arrest on site. Thursday, police charged David Morales with misdemeanors for theft and unlawful entry. Oh, shit. David Morales. This might be a son, a son Brito, man. Bush wishes the charges. Does he look like in this picture? I don't know, man. Is this a... Could be an own Brito. He's kind of short. This is an own Brito. Salute to you own Britos, man. He's glad I still couldn't be mad at an old Brito, man, because he's part of the Black and Brown Coalition. But glad I got to be like, I'm not, I don't care about him rummaging through my stuff and stealing my shit. I just care that I have two girls and a wife in here. Pulled over, followed him for a couple blocks. I called the police. They arrived and made an arrest on site. Thursday, police charged David Morales with misdemeanors for theft and unlawful entry. Bush wishes the charges were tougher. I think the justice system is not helping the citizens of Washington, D.C. Police have not confirmed, but neighbors believe Morales is behind more than a dozen thefts and other crimes. And Jesus, that motherfucking, that old burrito was busy in y'all neighborhood gliders. Alice is behind more than a dozen thefts and other crimes in Adams Morgan over the last couple of months. We have faced videos of someone who looks exactly like this guy committing multiple crimes in my building and multiple buildings in the area. John Aravosis lives around the corner. Oh, he's still in packages too. Damn. He over there still in packages. Because in those neighborhoods, this is how they did in my building. When you live in uh, with gliders, like I did in my last building, where it was probably like 50-50, gliders and, and sons, and all the sons was working class until they um, put in uh, market rate units in the building. When you live in places like that, the, the mailman doesn't put the, doesn't waste his time putting each package in each box. They just dump them right here, and the gliders come down, and they look at all of them, and if the one, if if if, if it's their name or, or, or room number ain't on it, apartment number isn't on it, they just leave. <laughs> you feel me? Like they'll a lot of will come down here, look at all those packages, and if none of them are here, they'll just leave. It won't take none of them. I I, I was I used to be floored by that. Every time I I had a package come, I would hurry up and go down there. I would, me and my wife, we would get the tracking number and we would try to make sure we knew when the data was coming and hurry up and go down there. You get down there, you find your package, you you relieved. Them gliders, man, they have packages stacked up fucking this fucking, like fucking little fucking fortresses and shit. And nobody ever stole. We didn't start getting packages stolen until they did that shit in D.C. where um, a certain amount of units in every building had to be market rate so that um, low-income people could live there.
gliders are honest, man. Gliders are they they high trust. They got high trust societies, man. Someone who looks exactly like this guy committing multiple crimes in my building and multiple buildings in the area. John Aravosis lives around the corner. Video from his building shows a suspect following people through. Yeah, somebody said that's what you're supposed to do. Soon as we got sons in the building, you started seeing signs up like this little area right here where the mailboxes are. You started seeing signs up like, um, whoever stole my package, please, um, you can keep everything. But there was a personal heirloom that was in there that my mom sent me a picture that is irreplaceable if you could just return that picture i would be very happy and then the next time you go down there it'd be another note up on the wall whoever stole my diabetes medicine um please i need my diabetes medicine da, 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 da. um i i can't get a refill because of the not insurance da, da, da. and then you go down there the next time it'd be another note <laughs> It just started being notes on the wall every fucking time you went down there with fucking when they started letting sons, low income sons, move in the building. And multiple buildings in the area. John Aravosis lives around the corner. Video from his building shows a suspect following people through the door and then snatching packages on several occasions. This is creepy with this guy. He is literally stalking our neighborhood and they're accusing him of one crime, mind you. Now, Morales was charged and has since been released, which is the procedure. <laughs> he's been charged and has since been released. Jesus Christ. And what do you think he's doing since he's been released? He's back over there. Now, Morales was charged and has since been released, which is the procedure for these misdemeanor charges. D.C. police tell us tonight that they can't confirm that they are looking into him as a possible suspect in those other crimes just yet. As soon as we get more information on that, we will certainly pass it along to you. <sighs> and on that note, I'm out of here, man. Peace out. Peace out.